Thymesia is an indie Souls-like that draws its lifeblood from Bloodborne and Sekiro. One of the cool things about this game is the huge amount of playstyles you're able to actually pursue. You can do a Sekiro parry-based playstyle, or you can do a Bloodborne dodge-based playstyle, on top of all of the unique mechanics that this game has to offer. The parry playstyle has a few distinct advantages that it tends to leverage when using it. When you do parry an attack, it does do a small amount of both regular damage and wound damage to the enemy. This allows you to slowly whittle away while on the defensive, which is good for the momentum of the fight overall. On the flip side though, you are sort of stuck in place during the parries. If an enemy is moving around a lot or you parry like a ranged attack and they, they fly backwards, you're sort of out of position and have to re-engage. If you opt for a Bloodborne dodge style approach, you gain a lot of mobility, which you can leverage to punish attacks that you normally wouldn't be able to. Although you're moving around a lot more, the momentum does tend to slow down as the enemies in this game regen health if they're not being hit, and if you're not parrying or attacking, then that gives them the opportunity to actually regain their health. This means for the Bloodborne based playstyle, you really need to understand your tools and take advantage of every window that the boss or enemy gives you. Thymesia also has a few unique options for every player. There's the feather which they use to act sort of like a ranged parry and interrupt the quote-unquote critical attacks. There's claws which used to do massive wound damage regain energy and then there's the plague weapon which almost feels like the sort of ninja tools from Sekiro or almost like mini trick weapon transformations from Bloodborne. I have to say this game really nailed it when it comes to the variety of playstyle that you're able to actually pursue throughout the game. The talent tree in this game allows you to fully customize your playstyle. This is done through the core mechanic of offensive and defensive buffs. They both stack to 5 and provide different bonuses depending on which one you have. Your choice of talents determines when and how you build each of these buffs. As you progress further down the talent tree, you gain more and more synergy for each buff you're building towards. An example on how the offensive buff would work, there's a talent that gives you an offensive buff every time you iframe with a dodge. So if you have the Bloodborne dodge playstyle, you're able to keep this buff up even though you're not attacking as much. You pair that with the play claws upgrade that gives you an offensive buff every time you hit with the claws and you're able to stack that buff up to 5 quickly and keep it up even though you're dodging attacks. There are even plague weapons that give you offensive and defensive buffs, as well as other buffs that are explored in the next section. If you're finding this information helpful, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get some more coverage on other indie games. Now on to some unique mechanics for Thymesia. Let's talk about plague weapons. There are so many different plague weapons that you can actually use, and they all have unique mechanics, interact with different stats that you choose, give different buffs, different movesets, expanded movesets, buffs they are awesome. There are a few ways you can actually use plague weapons. The first way you learn is to steal them from the enemy you're fighting. This gives you a single use of the plague weapon ability. Every enemy has a unique plague weapon type that they give you when you steal it. This even includes bosses and mini bosses. As you defeat enemies and you defeat bosses, there's a chance that they will actually drop a skill shard for the plague weapon they have. This allows you to equip up to two plague weapons without stealing them. As you get more skill shards for a plague weapon, it gets upgraded. You get more damage, you get reduced energy cost, you get an expanded move set, and you get even more buffs based on the stats that you have allocated through leveling up. There are so many different plague weapons that it doesn't matter what playstyle you have, what playstyle you want, you can always either fill a gap in your build or expand on the strengths of your build to really push the limits of what you can do. The build I was running really leaned on the plague weapon damage and the plague claw damage to create a feedback loop of energy recovery and high plague weapon usage. Like any souls like, the damage you take is high and you'll need all the potions you can get in order to survive. Luckily, there are three different types of potions that can each be customized based on what you want it to do and how you want to apply them. The general potion is your standard potion. It's the first thing you start with, it just gives you health. The long lasting potion gives you more health, but it applies over time, about 30 seconds or so. The fast acting potion heals you for less, but animates quickly and has more charges than normal. One of the unique features of Thymesia is that you're able to craft and customize your potions. You can do anything from adding energy recovery, adding additional health recovery, adding damage bonuses, or even reducing the damage you take. Choosing the right potion for your playstyle is key for succeeding in the fast-paced combat that Thymesia has to offer. 
in order to master Thymesia's combat, you have to understand how you can continue to damage the enemy's white health and green health simultaneously to keep them from regaining their health. Alternating between sword, claw, and plague weapons is key to make this happen. Using your feathers offensively also helps as it keeps the regen from starting again. You can pair this with other debuffs like bleeding in order to keep their health low for the entirety of the combat. Combining plague weapons with your playstyle, choosing the right buffs for your potions, and really capitalizing on the enemy's attack windows is how you succeed in Thymesia without a doubt. Yo, thanks again for checking out these tips to help you master the combat in Thymesia. 